Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today's video is my March book haul as well as an update on how I'm doing with the Read What You Own challenge. If you're new to these, I do these vlog style, so I'm going to be opening packages throughout the month. I'm going to tell you where I'm at right now at the beginning of March, and then at the end of the month I will do an update on how I'm doing with the Read What You Own Challenge. The Read What You Own Challenge is being spearheaded by Izzy Get Happy For Now and Shay over at Shay Geeks Out, so go check them out. I'm like kind of doing it. Some of them, some people are doing it more intensely than me, but I'm, I'm participating and it has been useful. So I do have two packages to unbox, but before I do that I wanted to talk about where I was at at the end of February going into March. Here are my stats for the end of February. I began 2023 with 177 audiobooks. I ended February with 176, so that's negative one. I began the year with 67 ebooks. I ended February with the same number, which is fine. I'm I, honestly, I'm mostly concerned about my physical books, the ebooks and audiobooks. Uh, it, it is what it is. It's fine. The physical is really where I'm concerned. So I began 2023 with 488 physical books on my TBR and I ended February at 468. I actually think it was 467, but it was negative 21. Pretty good for two months in. I am trying to read down that physical TBR. I have some goals in mind for that. So we'll see how I do throughout the month of March. And I have two boxes to open, both of which are pretty exciting actually. First, I've got a pre-order from Barnes and Noble. I'm pretty sure this is my finished copy of Delicious Monsters. Let's see if I'm right. One of my favorite things I've read this year. Yes! That is exactly what it is. Oh my gosh, look at it. Yes! Oh, it's so good. This is amazing. Uh, I like, he fair warning. Oh, I love the green underneath. That's perfect. Like the forest green. Oh, I'm so happy to have a finished copy. Um, I like my disclaimer on this is that I am kind of internet friends with the author. So heads up, I'm sure that did give me some you know, added goodwill to the book, but genuinely absolutely <laughs> loved this book. It's so good. I'm not going to dive into it. I have a Goodreads review. My Goodreads is linked down below if you want to check that out. And I actually also have a video where I talked about this in conjunction with some other horror books with creepy houses. This has kind of a gothic haunted house vibe to it. And it's about missing black girls. It's got a dual timeline. It goes really hard on the body horror, especially for YA. I would say this is upper YA. I really loved this and this will be going right here on my favorites shelf. I have an advanced copy, one of my favorite books I've read so far this year. Yay! Beautiful! Next I have this box which is very exciting that it has finally arrived. This is I believe for a Kickstarter I supported like last summer or fall and the books are finally here. I know there are people who got these last fall because they got swag boxes. I just got the books from this, so. Let's Yay! Oh, fun! Okay, so there's like a fancy box inside. Oh, this is cool. Okay, so I'll show you. So, peculiar tastes. Some of my romance readers know exactly what this is. Nicely packaged. This is awesome. I love that they have the fancy box inside the box. So this was a Kickstarter for a romance collaboration amongst a bunch of authors that wrote slightly interconnected paranormal erotic romance novellas. I've had the ebooks of them for quite some time and I've read some of them, but these are the physical copies. Yay! Oh, this is so fun. Thank you so much for backing our Kickstarter. Katie Robert I'm a big fan of and she's one of the people who was spearheading this. Um, I did add on, because it was only like a few dollars, I did add on a map of the Shadow Market where all of these little novellas were taking place. And then we have the books. Yes! Okay, I went ahead and got the paperbacks. Oh, these are really nice. They're kind of fun because they're books that you flip. We have The Demon's Bargain by Katie Robert. 
And then if you flip it over, it's The Death God's Sacrifice by Jenny Nordback. And they do, this does have a beautiful signed book plate. I think they all come with signed book plates, which is cool. If we look at the Katie Roberts side, we also get a signed book plate and they are sp all specific to the books. Love it, so there's number one. Okay, yeah, so there's three books, six novellas in total. We have The Captive Merman's Promise by Zoe Castile. I've not read this one yet, actually. I need to read that. And The Fae Queen's Captive by Sierra Simone. I have read this one. Have I, like, basically, have I read, like, half of all of these? Because I've read The Fae Queen's Captive. I've read The Demon's Bargain. I think I read one other. Yeah, I did. I did read one other and it's on the other one. That's kind of funny, actually. And lastly, we have The Hellmouth Guardian's Lover by Adriana Herrera. This is the other one I've read so far. And The Vixen's Deceit by Nikki Sloan. It's funny, I didn't realize I had done that, but I guess I have read like one of the novellas from each of the three volumes. Oh, this is cool. They look really nice together, actually. Peculiar Taste Volumes 1, 2, and 3. Happy that those arrived. Um, yeah, very lovely. Hey y'all, my book of the month box arrived and it's a different box than usual. I'm so curious if they're changing the box or if they just ran out and had to change to this. It's the same color, but look, it opens like this, which is weird. Anyway, let me show you what I got. I feel like at this point, everybody knows what book of the month is. I like them, and if I want one of their books, I get them. Oh my god. Okay, so this month, I picked a book, and I picked an add-on, because they had an add-on that I wanted a, a finished copy of. My pick for the month was Wayward by Amelia Hart. I just really like this cover. I've been eyeing it for a while, and it's like a witchy book, I want to say. I don't even know. I just, it like look at this this cover looks so good so oh oh interesting so three different timelines three different women across five centuries a debut novel an enthralling novel of female resilience tell me there's magic in here i feel like there yeah there is there's like spell casting in the 1600s and secrets and one timeline in world war ii the sounds really great. I, I, hopefully I like it. So that was my pick. And then the other one I have already read, but I wanted, to, wanted a finished copy of it. This is Lone Women by Victor Lavelle. I was lucky enough to have an early copy, an advanced copy of this for review, and I loved it. It was amazing. So when I saw Book of the Month had it, I was like, perfect. Give me that $11 add-on so that I can add this to my shelves. So I was a big fan of it. It is historical horror following this young black woman who is leaving her home down after her parents are dead and she's bringing with her a mysterious trunk and every time the trunk is opened people seem to disappear and she's trying to start over in rural Montana and I like this is a book that you don't want to know you probably shouldn't go in knowing much more than that but it is so good so nuanced so layered go some very interesting places. Uh, I think it also has lots of fantastic representation in terms of uh, characters of color, queer characters, lots of commentary on things and a story that it just, oh, it's so good. Anyway, I can't, I need to not talk about it because I don't want to spoil anything, but I absolutely loved it, which is why I bought my own copy of it. And uh, this was my other pick, so we'll see how I do with it. I am solo parenting for a week and it is the weekend. So uh, this package has been sitting on a shelf for a day and a half. You should be so impressed that I have yet to open it. So let's open it together and see what it is. I'm not sure what it is, but it feels like a book. Oh, cool. Nice. So this is a romance from Forever Publishing, All the Right Notes by Dominic Lim. It looks like it comes out in June. Obviously, I'm guessing queer <laughs> based on the cover. 
Um, June, coming June 6th with soul-bearing solos, heartfelt duets, and a big show-stopping finale, this hilarious and joyful novel will make your heart sing. It follows a character who is a piano player and composer in New York City. And oh, it looks like a second chance romance. He had somebody that he had a one night stand with in college who he's always had a crush on. Now he's putting on a charity performance and his crush is also going to be performing. That sounds adorable. Thank you so much to Forever comes out in June if you're interested. Excuse if you hear any noise in the background. We're gonna try to keep this quick, but there is construction happening in the apartment above me, it sounds like. Uh, two things came in the mail. I have a pre-order from last year that is a super special thing. And then I got a gift from one of you guys. So thank you, this was so nice and really, really unexpected. So it says, happy very early pride. Also sorry for your anxiety in February because I've been going through it too. So I hope this makes your day from Christopher. Thank you. That's so nice. Yeah, if you missed <laughs> my my February wrap up, it was a very, very high anxiety month for me. Um, this was so nice. You didn't have to do this. I that's that's really sweet. Okay, I haven't looked yet, so Yes! Oh yay! Yay! Thank you! Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, this I've been meaning to read this since I heard about it from Ashley last year. Yay! Oh, that's so exciting. That's gonna push me to read it sooner. The Lesbianist Guide to Catholic School by Sonora Reyes. Ashley, a bookish realm, loved this and I really want to read it as like, a, you know, deconstructing evangelical, like something that is tackling queerness and religion and stuff like really appeals to me. Thank you, Christopher. Oh my gosh, I really appreciate it. That that's very exciting. Thank you. This package is from Subterranean Press. They do like fancy editions of books and sometimes they do exclusive novellas that you can only get physically through them. They're a little pricey so I don't buy from them very often but I do have a few books on my shelf from them and I pre-ordered two novellas from them last year so this is the first of the two that I pre-ordered like last fall so it has finally arrived. I'm excited. Usually these are very well packaged. Love the bubble wrap. Ah, yes. Okay, so this is a novella, Unbreakable by Myra Grant, aka Shauna McGuire. She writes horror under her Myra Grant name. Let's open this up and look at it. Oh, that's so pretty. Y'all, Shauna McGuire and her pen names is almost always a hit for me. So when I saw this, I was like, God, I love it. We've got like a, a plus size badass lady. I don't know. The girls of Unbreakable Starlight were part of an ancient tradition of magical warriors defending the earth from the forces of the outside. They knew their powers and their place, and they planned to fight to the very end. They just didn't think the end would come so very soon. And they never dreamt that when the dust settled, two of their members would be the last magical protectors in the world. For Piper, her time as a member of Unbreakable Starlight was the best part of her life, the first and only time that she had been truly happy. She She'd had friends, she'd had powers, and she'd had her animal companion to make sure she understood all the patterns she saw in all things until it all came crashing down, etc. Um, anyway, I am excited about this. It looks really awesome. Ah, and it is signed and numbered. I got number 845. There's the nice cloth bound book underneath. This looks awesome. Yay, I'm glad it finally made it to me. Uh, if you are interested in reading this, they usually do eventually have the ebook available for sale. And sometimes you get audiobooks of them as well. It's just that this is the only way to get it physically. I have packages to open and these are very, very exciting. This one is a pre-order and these two are from one of my patrons who like on accident, got some extra books from Book Depository and offered to send me the extras all the way from Canada. So, um, oh my God, Amy, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm I'm very excited. Okay, so let me open my pre-order first and then I'll open these. From the UK and it should be my pre-ordered copy of The Adventures of Amina El Serafi. That's what I'm assuming. Let's see if I'm right. 
Oh my god! Oh my god! It has sprayed edges and it's signed! Oh! Whoa! Oh, this is so pretty! <laughs> oh my gosh! Y'all! Look at this! Look at this beauty! Oh! And those edges! Oh my gosh! It's so pretty! <gasps> I have already read it and I really liked it. Oh, this is very nice quality. Ah, I'm dying. I was excited to have it, but I didn't realize it was going to be so pretty. Look at this. There's like a full color map. Oh my God. This is incredible. Did I get a special edition? I think I might have gotten uh, a special edition of it, but yo. This is amazing. There's the signed tip-in page. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. It's so pretty. I also really, really enjoyed this and I do plan to continue on with the series. If you have it, oh, look at that. Like, do you see how shiny that gilding is? That is just remarkable. That is a beautiful book. Wow. Okay. I'll stop gushing now, but um, y'all, okay. I really, really enjoyed this. It is the start of a new series drawing on Middle Eastern history and following a middle-aged mother main character who is a former pirate and smuggler who has been raising her daughter for the last 12 years, but for reasons has to go back on the high seas. And there's, uh, you know, her ex husband technically still husband who she thinks is dead but he's not really dead he's also not really human and doesn't know about their daughter there's magic there's adventure it's delightful and i am thrilled with this copy so worth it oh, i'm i'm really excited about these thank you so much like you oh, y'all so amy Oh my gosh. So through a mistake, Amy ended up getting a whole extra set of some of these little mini penguin cloth bound classics and sent them to me. Like, oh my God, there's more in the other package. These are so pretty. I'm dying. Okay. Lolly Willows by Sylvia Townsend Warner. I, I don't even know what all of them are, but I'm so excited. The Ballad of the Sad Cafe by Carson McCullers and The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. These are beautiful. Oh my gosh, look at those. Okay, let's, let's open the other ones and then we'll look at the whole set. I just, wow. Y'all are too good to me. <laughs> I'm so, it's amazing, yay! Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Okay, okay, okay. Wow, four more. Oh, and there's like also, okay, okay, okay. So most of these are the little, the little size. So we've got Lady Susan by Jane Austen. I love Jane Austen and this is beautiful. Uh, the Queen of Spades by Alexander Pushkin. <laughs> oh my gosh. Of Ghosts and Goblins by Lafcadio Hearn. These are amazing. And then I also got The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Uh, this is full size, but it's so pretty. Look at the stars and planets. And I've actually never read this before too. This is amazing. Seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so excited to have these. I mean, now, do I now have like a larger TBR when I'm trying to read things I own? Yes, but you know what, do I care? No. I will eventually get to these. I'm pretty good about getting to my classics, so you can expect to eventually see these on various TBRs, but they are beautiful and I will add them to my collection. Thank you. I love it. Hello, I have a couple of boxes that arrived. Uh, there were some things on sale and some things that I wanted. And uh, so I bought some books on Amazon. This is the first set of things. There, there's more coming. Am I supposed to be buying this many books? No, but it's not that bad because some of them, well, you'll see. I'll just, let me, let me show you. Okay. Open. Yes. 
Uh, I'm so excited. Okay, so y'all, I had to get myself a copy of this because I freaking love it so much. This is Sister Song by Lucy Holland. I have already read it. This was the book that some of my patrons voted for me to do a patron exclusive reading vlog for and it's one of my favorite things I've read this year and so when I saw the, the hardcover was on sale and there was a coupon it was like 12 bucks I was like yes please I really really want this on my shelves. Um, so this is very similar to The Queens of Innis Lear by Tessa Gratton if you've read that although I think that this moves along at a much faster clip and be engaging to more people. It follows three siblings in you know long ago United Kingdom when there was starting to be an incursion of the Christian church battling against original pagan religions. Three children of a local king and the, there's a super creepy priest and the stuff he's doing is making the magic disappear. There is a trans character and I thought that his trans masculinity journey to that was really interesting and done really well. I just I really really loved this a lot. I thought that it was beautifully written. I loved the characters. I was completely swept away in it and so I bought myself a copy and I'm very happy to have it. It will be going on this shelf at the end of the month. Second box. Yay! All right, so two books in here. First is one that I've been meaning to buy for a while. This is on my challenge TBR for the year, Thrawn by Timothy Zane. It is a Star Wars book. It's on my list of Star Wars books to read. So I knew I was going to have to buy it at some point, And uh, this was a good time. So stay tuned. I have plans for reading this and the other books on that list. And then lastly, we have The Blood of Elves by Anders Ezra Sapkowski, the nice, beautiful new uh, hardcover edition. I'm realizing too that probably these aren't going to match because the first two are the UK editions, but I think I'm okay with that. Me and Leanna are doing a read along on Chapter 3 podcast this year for the Witcher series, and that seems like a good reason to buy these, and they were on sale. They're so pretty. Ooh. I'll carry on killing, mo killing monsters in the ruins of the world until some monster kills me. That is my fate, my reason, my life, and my attitude to the world, and it is not what I chose. It was chosen for me. Geralt of Rivia. These are lovely. So, uh, I think most of what has not yet arrived is more books in this series, and then one other thing. So, stay tuned. And the other box has arrived. I, why is the box so big? That I I don't know. It's not that many books, but let's open it. Maybe there's something else in here too. I don't know. Let's see. Oh. There is something else in here. I don't know what this is though. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's snacks. <laughs> they just put it in the same box with my books. Uh, so, okay. Let's look at the book. Um, so, first up, we have, uh, oh my god, three more of The Witcher hardcovers. I still don't have all of them. I got the ones that were on sale, basically. So we have The Time of Contempt, The Tower of Swallows, and Season of Storms. Eventually, I will probably buy the rest. They're beautiful. I am reading them. Look how pretty they are and how colorful. Yay. And then I do have one other book to add to my TBR. I got a copy of The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. It was super on sale. I want to say it was like 10 bucks for the hardcover. And I've been keeping my eye on it because Sea of Tranquility is one of my favorite books that I read this year. And so I want to go back and read Station Eleven and The Glass Hotel. So I'm um, keeping my eye out to see if I can get a deal on a hardcover for Station Eleven so they match because they're so pretty. But I have The Glass Hotel. Yay. I've got two packages to open. 
One I kind of peeked at because it felt like a book but I hadn't ordered a book from Amazon so I was curious what it was. It's actually something kind of exciting and then I have a package from a publisher. So this is a book I supported on Kickstarter like two years ago. <laughs> it is finally in its physical form. Don't Touch That, a sci-fi and fantasy parenting anthology with some authors like Kate Elliott, Mark Oshiro, Alex London, etc. I am pretty excited about this. My name should be in here somewhere in the acknowledgement section because I supported it on Kickstarter. Oh man, there's a lot of us. I don't know. I'm in here somewhere. It is not in alphabetical order, so hmm. Oh, there it is. There I am on the, the list of Kickstarter supporters. But yeah, this just sounded like a really fun anthology idea. It started during COVID and the idea of sci-fi fantasy parenting short stories sounded right up my alley as a parent myself. So now I have a copy physically to read. Yay. I also have a package from Entangled Publishing. I don't know what it is, but they do send me things sometimes. So let's see what romance books we have today. It's always exciting. Two books in here, it looks like. Oh, definitely more than two. All right, what do we got? Nice. The Prospector's Only Prospect <laughs> by Danny Collins. That is quite a title. I'm guessing this is like a, a Western historical. Yes, the rush is on for both gold and marriage in this charming historical. Interesting. So we have a, a divorcee and a mail order bride. Sounds fun. Next up is How Not to Marry a Duke by Tina Gabrielle. Okay, another historical. Two unlikely allies make for one scandalous courtship. From the moment her pet pig attacks him, Adeline Foster knows she does not care at all for the Duke of Warwick. Pet pig. That's hilarious. So we have an arrogant duke who tinkers with inventions <laughs> and a fake courtship. That sounds fun. All right, lastly, Highland Beast by Heather McCollum. Another historical, this one is a Highlander romance. His sword is his destiny, but so is she. Nice. Those look like fun, an array of different places and time periods for historical romance. Thank you to Entangled. I appreciate it. I've got three packages to open, two from publishers and one pre-order. Pre-order is from Waterstones. I am pretty sure this is my UK edition of the Luminaries. That should be what this is. Do I also have the US edition? Yes. Did I need the UK edition? Yes, it was so pretty. That should be what this is, unless it's something else. Yay! Oh, yay. It's so pr- Oh! How did I not know about this? Oh my god, guys. Look at the sprayed edges. It's so pretty. Maybe I just forgot about it, but like, the trees and the night sky. Ah! Oh, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is the first book in Susan Dennard's latest, and I really love her books, and this was so much fun. YA, fantasy, such a page turner. I just... Oh, it's so pretty. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy it arrived. And look how beautiful. Next, we have a package from Macmillan. This is probably from tour.com. They're sending me a couple of things, but this feels like no novellas. So I think it's something they asked me if I would be interested in. If, let's see if I would, that's what I'm thinking. All right. Yes. Okay, cool. So apparently the third novella in this series is about to come out and they asked if I'd be interested in reading them. I have not read anything from Fran Wilde, but these sounded really cool. This one's tiny. So The Jewel and Her Lapidary, The Fire Opal Mechanism, and then there's a third novella coming out soon that I should be getting when it's out. Their little fantasy novellas sounded really cool. So thank you so much to Tor.com. I will be reading those. That is like very short. So I 
probably could get through those pretty quickly. And then I have a package from Penguin. I'm guessing this might be my finished copy of Chaos and Flame, which I really enjoyed. Let's see if I'm right about that. Oh my god. There's gotta be a better way to do this. Oh yeah, of course. Of course there is. Yes! That's what this is. Pretty! Oh my gosh. Okay. Chaos and Flame by Tessa Gratton and Justina Ireland. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Look at this house dragon, house kraken, and the purple. I love it. And then, of course, house cockatrice and house bargast. If you read it, you'll understand. Um, house sphinx. Yes. Okay, so um, this is the first book in a new YA fantasy series that I really enjoyed. If you like political fantasy, this is really good. It's got a big cliffhanger ending. I definitely need to pick up book two. And it was a little slow to start. I was not totally sure how I felt about it at the beginning, but it really sucked me in. I loved a lot of what this was doing and I'm very excited to continue on. Thank you to Penguin for sending me a copy. I got a haircut and I have a package to open. It is another one from Tor, so I'm guessing it's the other thing that I was expecting from them. Let's see what it is. Oof. Oh no. Ah! Ow, jeez. Okay, that did not go well. Yay! Okay, this is exciting. Uh, so they very kindly sent me a copy of One From My Enemy by Olivia Blake, who I am a fan of. She's the author of The Atlas Six, and I have got to tell you, I have enjoyed everything I have read from Olivia Blake. Some a little more than others, but I've liked all of them, so I anticipate liking this too. I think this is a reprint of another book that she originally published, Indie, before The Atlas Six took off. Um, but, you know, intricate web of love, magic, and rival witch families in New York City. Yeah, sounds right up my alley. Ooh, look at those end papers. I love art on end papers. Beautiful. Yay, thank you so much to Tor. I'll be reading this soon. Hey y'all, I've got two boxes from Harlequin to open, which is very exciting. Both of these I think are for promotions that they're doing over on Instagram. They are kind enough to send me some stuff. Also, I'm loving my new hair. I think I already did a clip with the new haircut, but it, it's just, it's making me really happy. I, it was time for a change and I'm really liking how it's turning out. All right, let's open these babies up. Okay. All right, box number one, because they always send them in separate boxes. Why? I don't know. Probably something to do with the shipping department, but ooh, love this. No Rings Attached by Mona Shroff. It looks lovely. No love, no commitment, no problem, right? Fleeing her own nuptials wasn't part of wedding planner Sangeeta Parikh's design for her life. Neither was stumbling into Chef Sunny Pandya's arms, nor the video that went viral. Now they're an internet sensation, so why not fake the relationship with no commitment? <laughs> I love a fake relationship. This looks adorable. Thank you. Nice. Game of Courtship with the Earl by Paulia Belgado. Love it. A game to fool the ton and win a husband. American heiress Maddie DeVries is aware that most people think she's too tall and ungainly to find a match. I'm, I'm, I'm figuring out why I might have requested this one. And that's before any gentleman learns of her unladylike interest in manufacturing. So she enlists her friend's brother Cameron, the Earl of Balfour, in a game of pretend courtship. Y'all, do you see a theme? I, I like this. A pretend courtship to win suitors. It works like a charm. But why is a man who's sworn off love, Cameron, the only one she craves? I mean, listen, these are hitting all of my tropes. Uh, thank you so much to Harlequin. They sound amazing. Two packages came in the mail from publishers. Uh, and I'm not actually sure what one of these is, to be honest. I think I know what the other one is. Let's find out. We have one from HarperCollins, and I'm guessing this is from Harlequin, because they're supposed to be sending me another book for a promotion on Instagram, so that might be what this is. Let's see. Yes, that is it. 
Oh, this is so cute. A Rule Book for Restless Rogues by Jess Everly. This is an advanced copy of a book going on sale July 11th, and it sounds really cute. It's a historical male male romance. Uh, set in 1885 London between two best friends. It looks cute. Thank you to Harlequin. Then I have something from Simon and Schuster. I have no idea what this would be, so let's see. Oh, okay, okay. I did know I was getting this. I, yeah, okay, cool. So this is Miles Morales Suspended by Jason Reynolds. I'm excited about this. So I read, oh, interesting. So this one is like in verse. That's different. So I read the original Miles Morales Spider-Man novel that Jason Reynolds wrote, and I really liked it quite a lot. And so when they reached out to see if I'd be interested in reviewing this, I was like, yeah, definitely send it along. When does this one come out? Um, May. So this is coming out in May. This one is middle grade. I just didn't realize that it was going to be mostly in verse. Not the whole thing is in verse, but most of it is. That's kind of cool. Interesting. Okay, so awesome. Thank you to Simon and Schuster Children's for sending it along. Hello, tomorrow is the last day of the month, and so I'm here to wrap up this video and let you know how I did with the Read What You Own challenge. I do have one more book that I've purchased that I am going to pick up later today, so maybe I'll include a clip of that, but it's for a collaborative video project. This is Corinne by Rebecca Morrow. Um, stay tuned. I have a video coming for that, and I'm going to be in a live stream over on Mara from Books Like Woe's channel discussing this book so it should be fun so I did pick that one up but I will be starting it immediately so that's the final book coming into my collection for the month of March. You may have noticed I did have a lot of new books come in this month not because I bought a lot of new books but because a lot were sent to me. I'm not upset about it. I'm very grateful to everybody who sent things, uh, publishers, patrons. It, it's been an amazing month but it has, you know, slightly affected my numbers with the Read What You Own challenge. It's not too terrible. It could be worse, but it could be better as well. So let's revisit where I was at at the beginning of the month and where I am at the end of the month. At the beginning of February, I had 176 audiobooks on my TBR, which was a negative one. I had 67 ebooks on my TBR, which stayed the same since the beginning of 2023. And I had 467 physical books on my TBR, which brought me to a negative 21 since the beginning of the year. Ending of the month, I have actually made some good progress on my audiobooks. I now have 172 on my audiobook TBR. It is worth mentioning that some of these books I own in multiple formats. So it, it, you can't just like add all these numbers together to get the total of number of books on my TBR because sometimes I own a book in two or three different formats. It, it is what it is. Ebooks, I am still at 67, so there is no change there. And physical is 468, which is up one from the beginning of the month and puts me at negative 20 for the year, which to be honest is not that bad considering how many books came in this month. The fact that I've read enough to only be up by one for March, I'm not mad about it. And I think April is going to be much better. So that's where we're at at the end of March, negative 20 books net from my physical TBR. It's going okay. Like, could it be going better? Yeah, probably. But I'm not too upset about it. At least we're headed in the right direction for the most part. So talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, let me know are you a book collector? Like I had so, so many beautiful books come into my collection this month. And I'm a big fan of that. I like books as aesthetic objects, as beautiful sort of pieces of art on my shelves. And so I really enjoy when a book is physically beautiful. But I know some people just don't care about that. That's not a thing that they're interested in. Let me know how you approach that in the comments down below. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.